Welcome to the Homeworld Catechism tutorial. This tutorial is divided into 12 lessons. Each lesson has objectives listed in the bottom left corner. As in the regular single player game, clicking on these will provide you with detailed information about an objective. If at any time you need more information on how to complete a lesson objective, clicking the objective listing will give you instructions. If you are familiar with Homeworld and know how to complete an objective without explanation, you can do so. You can even skip the objective altogether, though a refresher never hurts. You can proceed to the next lesson at any time by clicking the button labeled Next Lesson. You can restart a lesson or go back to a previous lesson by clicking the button labeled Restart Lesson. Pressing the backspace key will skip from one speech event to the next. For this tutorial, it is best if your key configuration is set to the game's default. If you have altered your key bindings in the options screen prior to beginning the tutorial, you can reset them by pressing Escape. This will bring up the game menu. From there, you can access the key configuration settings by clicking the Options button. Good. The objective for Lesson 1 is now complete. Click the Next Lesson button to move on to Lesson 2. This lesson deals with controlling the camera in Cataclysm. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. To move the camera view around, click and hold the right mouse button. Then, by moving the mouse left or right, you can rotate the camera horizontally relative to your ships. By clicking and holding the right mouse button, and then moving the mouse up or down, you can move the camera into an overhead or underside view of your ships. The camera can be zoomed in and out relative to your ship. Hold both mouse buttons and move the mouse up and down to move the camera in and out. If you have a mouse wheel, rolling it will do the same thing. The lesson is now complete. Click the Next Lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson deals with selecting ships. When you issue a command, it is issued to all of the ships currently selected. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. Left clicking on a ship by itself will select that ship. If the ship is in formation with other ships, left clicking it will select all the ships in the group. Clicking the ship a second time will select that individual ship. Recon, ready to go. Just tell me where to go. Zoom the camera out to view the rest of your fleet. Then click and hold the left mouse button, and then drag the pointer across one or more ships to select them. Try selecting a mixed group of ships. Roger, Command. Notice the selected ship list in the top right corner. This list not only tells you what you currently have selected, but you can use it to select a particular ship type. Click on the first ship type in the list. Just say the word. If you have selected one or more ships, you can add more ships to that selection by holding down the shift key and selecting the additional ships you want added. The lesson is now complete. Click the Next Lesson button when you are ready to move on.
This lesson covers focusing the camera in Cataclysm. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. To focus the camera on any ships you have selected, press the F key. The first time you focus, the view will center on the ship. A second time will move the view in close to the selected ships. Alternately, you can hold the Alt key and left click on an object to focus in close on it. This Alt focus allows you to focus the camera on most anything in the game, including your ships, enemy ships, even asteroids and debris. Remember that once you have focused the camera, you can use the right mouse button to rotate the camera around on either the mouse wheel or both mouse buttons to zoom in and out. The lesson is now complete. Click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson covers the Sensors Manager, which is a broad tactical overview of the mission area, and gives an introduction to the right-click menu. Activate the Sensors Manager to continue. The Sensors Manager can be accessed through the right-click menu under the heading View, and then the subheading of Sensors. Alternately, you can activate the Sensors Manager by pressing the spacebar. This is the Sensors Manager. All of the commands you can issue from the main view, such as selecting, attacking, or moving, can also be issued here within the Sensors Manager. These commands will be discussed later. You can still click and hold the right mouse button to change your view, and click and hold both mouse buttons, or the mouse wheel if you have it, to zoom in and out while the Sensors Manager is active. While you can move your view however you like, a top-down view is often the best overview of your fleet in Sensors Manager. This is your command ship. All ships appearing in the Sensors Manager are color-coded. Your ships appear in green. Hostile ships are red. Friendly ships, such as Allied ships, ships manned by other Kith, or Tidan Republican ships, appear as blue. Asteroids appear as brown dots. This is a ping. Pings only show up in Sensors Manager and are used to point out important items like significant ships or areas of space. Let's have a look at the Sensors Manager subfunctions. The blue area denotes the range for your active sensors. Active sensors only give useful readings relatively close to the ships of the fleet. Enemy ships can only be spotted within active sensor range. Friendly ships can be seen beyond this range as they are sending you their location coordinates. The light-colored framework is a display of the approximate range for passive sensors. As you move ships around, this framework will change accordingly to show what areas have been explored. The passive sensors record the position of resources within their scan range, but passive sensors use such a weak signal that you cannot see if an explored area has changed until a ship is sent through the area again. These are weak sensor returns from beyond passive sensor range. You can use these returns as a landmark of sorts to help visualize the position of your fleet in an area of space. These weak returns are often good indications of where to look for resources. You can exit Sensors Manager by using the right-click menu and selecting the heading View, then the subheading Main Region. You can also exit Sensors Manager by pressing the spacebar or by selecting one or more ships and focusing on them. The lesson is now complete. Click the Next Lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson deals with moving ships and setting up patrol paths using waypoints. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. If you have ships selected, you can activate the right-click menu and select Move from the menu. Alternately, you can access the Movement Manager by pressing the M key. Activate the Movement Manager now. 
putting me at him. This is the movement manager. It will be locked open for the time being in order to demonstrate its usage. You can still click and hold the right mouse button to change your view, and click and hold both mouse buttons or the mouse wheel if you have it to zoom in and out, even while the movement manager is active. This is often handy when trying to place the destination point in a particular area. This is a good angle to use when in the movement manager. It gives you a very clear picture of where everything is in three-dimensional space. Tell the ships to move by placing the pointer where you want to go. To move ships vertically, hold the shift key while moving the pointer. When the movement manager is open, ships in view will have an orange line drawn from them which indicates their position up or down in relation to the pie plate of the movement manager. These lines are also drawn for pings while moving in sensors manager. If you move the pointer to the base of a height line, then hold down shift to adjust the pointer's height, you can use the height line as a guide to help you move the pointer to a specific position relative to another ship. Once you have the pointer where you would like your ships to go, and you are ready to have them move out, click the left mouse button. The lockdown on movement manager is now released and you can move your ships. Be there before you blink. my way, Command. I'm on my way, Command. Waypoints are a series of points in space which make up a path for a ship to move along. As an example, you can use waypoints to set up patrol paths, define a search pattern, or to move your ships around and away from large enemy forces. Go into the right-click menu and select Start Waypoints. This is the Waypoint Manager. It works exactly the same as the Movement Manager. Only every time you left-click a specific point, the manager will mark the point and remain open so you can add new points to your waypoint path. There are three types of waypoint paths. Linear waypoint mode will direct the ships to follow the waypoints and wait at the end. End-to-end -end waypoint mode will instruct the ships to follow the waypoint path to the end, turn around, and follow the waypoints back again. The ships will continue to follow the path like this until they are instructed otherwise. Circular waypoint mode will instruct the ships to follow the waypoints. Then, when they reach the final waypoint, to head back to the first point and start following the path again, making a closed patrol loop. The ships will continue to follow this path until they are given other orders. These modes can be set by opening the right-click menu, selecting the heading Start Waypoints, and then selecting the waypoint mode you want from the subheadings. Once you have created the waypoint pattern you want, pressing the W key will close the waypoint manager and set the selected ships along that path. Coordinates locked in.
The lesson is now complete. Click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson teaches how to issue attack commands. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. When you have combat vessels selected and you move your mouse over enemy ships, you will see the pointer change. This new pointer icon means the ship is an enemy target. By left clicking on it, you will be ordering your selected ships to attack. Armed and target set. You can also hold the control key, click and hold the left mouse button, and drag a band box around two or more enemy ships to attack multiple targets. This can be done in the main game view as well as within the sensors manager. Roger the lesson that. is now complete. Targeting. Click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson covers how to build ships. Ship construction is done in the Build Manager. You can access the Build Manager either through the View options in the right-click menu or by pressing B. Activate the Build Manager now. Start by selecting Worker from the Build menu. Clicking on any ship from the list will highlight it as the ship you'd like to build. By continuing to click the ship you have selected, you will increase the number of that type of ship you'd like to build. You can also set the number of ships you wish to build by clicking the increase arrow. The decrease arrow will obviously set a lower number if you want to change the number of ships to build, or you can repeatedly right-click on the ship you have selected. When you are ready to build, you can start construction by pressing the Build button. This gauge indicates your support unit usage. The maximum size of a fleet is measured by support units. Different ships have different support unit requirements. An Acolyte, for instance, requires fewer support units than a larger ship, such as a Dreadnought. Construction underway. As you increase the number of ships to build, the gauge reflects the number of support units you have remaining. You can increase your total support units by researching and building support modules. You can pause or cancel building at any time by selecting ships being built and pressing the pause or cancel buttons. You can resume paused builds by pressing the pause button again. Highlighting a ship from the list and clicking the info button turns on or off useful statistics and information about that ship. All of your command critical functions are tied into one another. You can move from the Build Manager to the Research and Systems Managers and back again through these buttons here. Worker ready. The lesson is now complete. 
click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson covers the three important functions of a worker, harvesting resources, repairing ships, and salvaging. These three special abilities are good examples of context-sensitive actions. By learning how to use the worker's special abilities, you will learn how to use those of the other ships in your fleet. Note that the workers you have here in the tutorial are already upgraded with repair and salvaging technologies. Outside of this tutorial, in order to use these abilities, the appropriate technology must be researched and workers must then be properly upgraded. Researching and upgrading will be covered later. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. This is an example of a special action. When the mouse cursor changes from an arrow to an icon, this indicates a special action is available. The action can then be triggered by clicking the right mouse button. For instance, when the mouse pointer is moved over an asteroid while workers are selected, the cursor will turn into a shovel, indicating that clicking the right mouse button will issue a harvest command. If there is no special action available, right-clicking will bring up the right-click menu. Another way to perform special actions is to hold down the Z key, then left-click and drag the mouse pointer across the ships or items that you wish to affect. When workers are upgraded with repair technology, you can select them and then right-click on a damaged ship to repair it. In addition to using workers, ships can be repaired automatically when they are docked. Select the workers you want to salvage with. Sometimes a larger salvage item will require several workers. Salvaging the Iron Cannon Frigate requires two. In order to salvage a ship, the ship must be brought Worker down ready. below 50% health. You can tell when a ship is sufficiently damaged, when flames begin to vent from its hull. The Iron Cannon Frigate is adequately damaged and is ready to be salvaged. Right-click on the ship or item you want to salvage, and the worker will begin salvaging. Target acquired.
Roger, Command. Worker here. By harvesting, you acquire resource units, or RUs, which are used to build ships and modules. To direct workers to harvest, select your workers, then move the mouse pointer over an asteroid or other resource and click the right mouse button. Alternately, you can select harvest from the right click menu or press the H key. The workers will then automatically harvest any resources that your sensors have revealed. The lesson is now complete. Click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson covers advanced topics in attacking, such as how to put a selection of ships into formation and how to set tactics. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. To set ships into a formation, select the ships you wish to set, then select formations from the right-click menu and select the desired formation. In this case, set the formation to Delta. Ready. Delta, formation set. A ship's tactics determine how it will react in a combat situation. When set to aggressive tactics, a ship will actively pursue and attack any enemy it encounters. When set to neutral tactics, a ship will passively defend itself, but will not perform any other actions without orders. When set to evasive tactics, a ship will flee any enemy it encounters. To set a ship's tactics, select one or more ships, select tactics from the right-click menu, and then select the desired tactic setting. In this case, Set tactics to aggressive. Going to high alert now. You can issue the guard command from anywhere, including the sensors manager. Select the escort ships you intend to guard with. Then hold the G key and bandbox select the ships you want the escort ships to guard. The escort ships will then move to protect the ship they're guarding. Escorts assigned. Assign ships to a hotkey group for easy selection later. To do this, select the ships you want to group. Then, press Control and a number from 1 to 9. This will be the number of the group. You can quickly select all the ships in this group at any time by pressing whatever number you assign to the group. The lesson is now complete. Click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This Heading lesson covers how to research upgrades for your fleet. This is done through the research manager. You can activate the research manager from the right-click menu by selecting the heading view and the subheading research manager. Alternately, you can access the Research Manager by pressing the R key. Activate the Research Manager now. This is the Research Manager. You can move from the Research Manager to the other Command Function Managers and back again through these buttons. The Research Manager works a lot like the Build Manager. 
when you want to research a technology, click on it in the list on the left. You can then double click the technology or click the research button below to begin research. As in the build manager, clicking the info button will give more information on selected technologies. Research underway. Research completed. Link technology research has been completed. Any new acolytes you build will have this technology. As well, you can now upgrade previously built acolytes. Notice the blinking yellow dot next to the ship's condition bar. This is an indicator that a ship has upgrades available. Larger ships, like the command ship, can have their crews execute upgrades in the field. In the case of small ships, they need to dock for upgrades. This is done via the Upgrade command in the right-click menu. This command, like the yellow indicator dot, will only appear when there are technologies available for upgrades. Stand by, Group 1. Roger, Command. Going into docking pattern. Select your upgraded acolytes, and from the right-click menu, select the heading Special Actions, and then the subheading Link. Stand by, Group 1. Receiving. Preparing to dock. The lesson is now complete. Click the next lesson button when you are ready to move on. This lesson covers various other features of Homeworld Cataclysm. Click an objective to continue with the lesson. The tactical overlay shows ship types, paths, and other useful information. To turn the tactical overlay on or off, choose View and the subheading Tactical Overlay from the right-click menu. To turn the pilot's eye view on or off, use the right-click menu, and from under the heading View, choose the subheading Pilot View. Worker ready. To retire a ship, choose Retire from the right-click menu. Retiring ships frees up support units and also returns a small amount of resource units to your RU total.
commandeered ship has been decommissioned. If you are worried about your ship being captured, or you need the support units, you can order a ship to scuttle itself. To order a self-destruct or scuttle of a ship, select the ship and hit the shift plus the S keys. The ship will then ask for confirmation. If you then hit the shift plus the S keys again quickly, it will self-destruct. Confirmation is required to prevent the accidental destruction of your ships. Roger, Command. Prepare to self-destruct. May the Mortal Hells. In single-player missions, you can use time compression to speed things up. With time compression on, the world moves by at eight times the speed. This is useful in cases such as at the end of a mission while harvesting remaining resources. You can turn time compression on or off by pressing the backslash key. This is the end of the Homeworld Cataclysm tutorial. All of the topics covered here are also explained in greater detail in the manual, along with helpful quick keys and other useful information. Click the quit button to exit.